Awesome, Lord. You are mighty, you are righteous, you are holy. Hallelujah. Oh, you're, girl, you're wonderful, oh God. You're wonderful, oh God. Everyone that's here with me and joining online, I'm going to ask that you turn your Bibles to John chapter 19, verse 28. John chapter 19, verse 28. And the scripture reads thus. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Dear Lord, speak one more time to your people. Anoint me afresh. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I ask that you remain with me for about 11 and a half more minutes at the cross as we take a look at the fifth cry that our Savior cried out while hanging there being crucified. The quick, the, the fifth cry was the shortest of all the seven phrases, but it was definitely not short in significance. The fifth cry may seem ironic and paradoxical because he's crying out, I thirst. But I want to declare to you this afternoon that I thirst is a selfless cry, a very selfless cry. You see, we have I thirst coming from the one who just chapters before was telling a Samaritan woman that he is the well of living water from which the water will never run dry. This is the source that is crying out, I thirst. The person crying out, I thirst, is the word, the logos that was in the beginning that spoke and created things into existence. But yet he's crying out now, I thirst, I thirst. It seems strange. It seems weird. But, but, but he is crying out, I thirst. It seems selfish. It seems like he's finally seeing, seeking for something for, for himself. It's like he's making a plea for himself, but it's anything but. He's considering everybody but himself when he cries out, I thirst. I thirst. You see, if you ever examine or go through Jesus' life and ministry, you notice that every time he taught, Anytime he made a modern reference or referenced something that had to do with the modern day, there was always a spiritual meaning behind it. And, and, and so it is here in this cry as well. But before we get to that, I don't want to glimpse over the modern reference. I don't want to glimpse over the, the, the surface reference here and the fact that he cried, I thirst. He cried, I thirst, my first point, simply to fill flesh. Uh, he cried, I thirst. In other words, he cried, I thirst, because he was physically thirsty. I don't want to glimpse over that because I want us to acknowledge the fact that he was fully man. Yes, I know that he is Emmanuel, God with us. I know that he is, this is the word that the, John declared was with us in the beginning and was with God and was God, uh, uh, is God, and manifests himself in the flesh. I know that we have to un recognize his deity. But we can't skip past the fact that he was human. We can't skip past the fact that he walked on this earth as a man. He walked with two legs like man. He, he talked like a man. He sweat like a man. He hungered like a man. As a matter of fact, when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible told us that after he was done, he was hungry. He hungered. He was tempted as man was. He hurt as man does, and he bleed as man did. He walked as man. And I know a lot of times we uh, subconsciously don't want to identify to the fact that he was a man because it holds us accountable. What I mean by that is that he showed us a blueprint on how to walk on this earth. He gave us a blueprint of how to live holy. He gave, I know, I know holiness isn't always popular, but it's still right. He gave us a blueprint of how to live holy on this earth. The Bible tells us that he was in all points tempted as we were, yet without sin. Yet without sin. This is why that we can look to him, unto him he who is able to keep us from falling. 
He is able to sympathize with our weakness. He is able to keep us, to present us from falling and present us faultless. This is why when he caught, when, when they brought the woman to him, uh, caught in the middle of adultery, he, 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 the, she, he declared that she was forgiven, but yet he gave a commandment afterward. He said, go and sin no more. It is incumbent upon us, saints, that we must go and sin no more. We can't use humanity as a plea to live our lives any type of way. We can't use our, uh, the, the fact that we are humans and not perfect to do whatever we want. We still must live holy. Somebody say, holiness is still the way. Still must live holy. He bled as human. He hurt as a human. He lived his life as a human. He needed to replenish his bodily fluids. He was bleeding. He lost a whole lot of blood. He felt every one of them 39 lashes just specifically for you, Elder Rogers. He felt each and every one of them 39 lashes while he was thinking about you, Elder Jeanette. He was thinking about you there online when he got all them stripes and them skin was tearing off of his back. He was thinking about you and he felt each and every one. So to, to not consider him human would be to diminish his sacrifice. But he was human and he needed to replenish his bodily fluids. There's going to be times when we walk on this earth and, 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 and serve Christ that we too will need to replenish ourselves. It is important that we know who to go to to replenish ourselves. It is important that we know who to go to to, to be refilled and revived. We, some people turn to the wrong things and that's why they keep going back and not being fulfilled. But if we turn to our Savior, if we turn but to the source, we too can be replenished. So he cried out, I thirst as he was growing weary as he was growing weary now this isn't the first time uh, after he cries out i thirst he is offered a drink but this isn't the first time while he was hanging on the cross that he was offered a drink the first time the soldier gave him uh, 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 vinegar mixed with myrrh he, he, and what, what that was is it was supposed to act like a sedative to kind of ease the pain but jesus had to turn it down one, I, I, I believe that one, he, he, he turned it down because he wanted to feel the full effect of the agony while he was hanging on there on the cross. And two, I believe that he turned it down because he wanted to be sober-minded as he continued his ministry on the cross. You see, sometimes as we're living our life for Christ, we have to turn things aside. Sometimes we have to push things away for the glory of God. Even if it makes us comfortable, it's not always about our comfort, but it's about his will being done. Sometimes we have to just push things aside in order to accomplish the will of God. So he said, no, this time they offered him a drink and he tasted it. This one was vinegar without the myrrh and it was bitter. It was bitter. He tasted it. And this represents the next reason why he cried out, I thirst, was to finish the cup. You see, this bitter cup wasn't his. This bitter cup wasn't for him at all. This bitter cup, after examining everything that took place in his life and on that day, this bitter cup had uh, the ingredients of this cup were pain, was separation, was shame. Was, 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 was agony, was, was, and most importantly, the wrath of God. This was not his cup to drink. This was not his cup to drink. This was our cup. The Bible tells us that he took our cup, that he took this bitter cup on our behalf. He took it for us. He took it for me. You see, he thirsted just like the rich man did when he ended up in hell. He thirsted when he cried out, I just want a drop of water. Please send Lazarus to give it to me. He felt every bit of that because as Elder Sherry just explained earlier that he felt the separation from our father from bearing, bearing our sins on his back. He felt that separation, and that is essentially what hell is, being separated from God. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be separated from God. I don't want to be apart from his presence. He felt that separation. It was a cup of separation. Also, the cup of persecution that he mentioned earlier on when he's talking to James and John when they asked if they can sit next to him on the throne. He replies, can you drink of this cup? You see, this cup entails persecution. Now, I don't want you to get it twisted because in this life, if you are serving Jesus, you will be persecuted by man. For the world, the Bible tells us that the world will hate us as it hated him. 
I'm getting sick and tired of us trying to blend in with the world. It's just not going to happen. I'm getting sick and tired of the saints trying to look like the rest of the world. They're going to hate you. You can't please them. They're going to hate you like they hated Christ. But we are going to suffer persecution. But for this sake, the Bible tells us that we are blessed. We are blessed for suffering persecution for his sake. As long as we are not persecuted by the Father for having turned from him. In this cup was persecution. You see, he knew all about everything that was inside of this cup that he was going to be drinking. He knew all about what the ingredients were, but yet he drank it anyway. There's a lot of times God would send us on missions and he wouldn't give us the full details because he, know, he knows we would not be able to handle it. But I want to declare to you that Jesus, and he showed us while he was in the garden praying, if it's possible, let this cup pass. Nevertheless, Pastor Joy mentioned it earlier when she was laying out the, the context that he cried out, nevertheless, I need some of us to have that nevertheless spirit. I know that it's hard, but nevertheless... Lord, if you have to give us this coronavirus, I don't want to deal with it. But nevertheless, if I have to be placed in this situation at work, I don't want to. But nevertheless, it is not my will, but thy will be done. Nevertheless, I dare somebody to have a nevertheless spirit. Tell your neighbor in the living room, say nevertheless, nevertheless. He cried out, knowing full and well what was in that cup, and he said, nevertheless, thy will be done. Uh, also in that cup was fear and trembling. In Isaiah, the Bible tells us that he took the cup from our hands, so he made it personal. He came over to us, uh, Pastor Joy, and while we had the cup in our hands, getting ready to drink like a drunkard who has one too many drinks and doesn't know the damage it's doing to him, we had, he had to come over and take it out of our hands. He took the cup of bitterness and shame out of our hands. He took away bitterness and replaced it with blessings. He took away agony and replaced it with the anointing. He took away our pain and placed it with power. He took away our shame and replaced it with his spirit. Now we can lift up our cup and say, I, this is my cup, oh Lord. Join the psalm and say, I lift it up. Come and quench this thirst in it. In my soul, right of heaven. Lead me till I want no more. Oh my God. We can now lift up our cup and fill it with more of him because he took our cup of pain. He took that bitter cup. And this last part, I'm closing out. I'm closing out. This last part, I appreciate that he, he drank the cup to fill his flesh. I uh, am grateful that he drank the cup to finish the, uh, the, to finish the cup. But this last part gets me excited. He finished the cup simply to fulfill scripture. Now, the reason why this gets me excited is because he's hanging on the cross. He's be be beaten, battered, bruised, and debilitated. He's done, lost a whole bunch of blood, Elder Mark. He's lost all his fluids. He has no energy left, it appears. But yet he still has enough power to sit there and say, oh, yes, I remembered I promised this years ago, so I must accomplish it because my word will not return unto me void. So while he did that in a state of what seemed like weakness, how much more do you think he's looking over his word in a seat of authority? How much more are you holding on to a promise from him this afternoon? Are you holding on to a, I declare that he is looking after his word. If he promised that you will have perfect peace, I guarantee you, you will have perfect peace. Uh, uh, if he promises that he'll come back again, Pastor Joy, he's coming again. He is coming again. He thirsts to, to fill the flesh. He thirsts to finish the cup. And he thirsts to fulfill scripture. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.